Hey guys, how are you all? My name is Harshit Vedi, friends, and I welcome you back to my video. So, in this video, friends, I am going to talk about two things. One, what are the sources of water pollution, and the second, what are the types of water pollution, friends? So, the basic details about these things will be given by me in this video, friends. After, you know, the next two videos will be related to the type of industry that are causing water pollution, also the inorganic water pollutants and the organic water pollutants that will be discussing discussed by me, friends. And after that. There is a second video in which I have discussed the effects of water pollution. So the link of both of those videos you will find in the description box below. Now starting with this thing, friends. Before starting, I will have to tell you that this video is also available in Hindi. If you want to watch the Hindi version of the video, the link is given in the description box below. Also, you can follow me on Instagram, friends, and subscribe to me on YouTube. So basically, what is water pollution? Water pollution is something that, friends, if you are going to add certain substances to water, they can be organic substances. They can be inorganic substances, organic substances which can be break down into smaller constituents, inorganic substances which cannot be break down. Then, if you are going to add something biological to the water, something radiological, radioactive, or even if you are not adding some specific thing or some tangible thing, suppose you are adding heat to the water, so that will also cause a pollution. So basically, anything which you add to the water, which is going to change the natural characteristics of that water. And it is going to pollute it, then that will be termed as water pollution. The very first source of water pollution, which I am going to discuss, is pollution according to the sources. And the sources are two: one is point sources, and one is non-point sources. We are going to talk about both point sources and non-point sources. What is point sources, friends? Here you can see that there is a waste treatment plant. Here you can see there is a factory. Now this factory at you know, situated at fixed places, and these factories are giving some outlet, some pollutants, and these wastewater treatment plants are giving some outlet. Now they are releasing pollutants here in this screen. So basically, these are point sources because we very well know the location of the factory, we very well know the location of the wastewater treatment plant, and we very well know that where they are discharging their pollutants in the water. So basically, point sources of pollution are a little bit, you know. Easy to manage. Why they are easy to manage? Because the people know, the government know, the pollution dealing agencies knows that where this pollution is occurring. Whereas when we don't know from where, what exact points the pollution is occurring, they become non-point sources. What are non-point sources, friends? Non-point sources are those sources of water pollution where we actually are not able to predict, you know, comfortably, or we are not able to hundred percent say. That from where will that pollution come? That becomes non-point sources. For example, city streets. This city is there, and this city is discharging a lot of pollutants. It is coming through a lot of channels, so it will be discharged over a lot of area. So you cannot fix one point from where the city pollution is coming. The same goes for suburban development. What is suburban development? Any city which develops near a big metropolitan city that becomes a suburb. So the pollution that will be coming from suburban areas that will also be. Distributed over a huge area, you cannot decide one point from where the pollution is coming. The same is true for rural homes. The same is true for cropland, that is agricultural area. The same is true for livestock area, that is animal feedlot. So basically, these are those areas where one specific point source of pollution is not known to us, and that is why they become non-point sources. Got it? Now, in these non-point sources, you know. See, there are one as point sources, one as non-point sources. Even in these non-point sources, there are two types. One is community waste water. Second is industrial waste. Community waste means that waste which has been discharged from houses, which is being discharged from industries, commercial stuff. Basically, there is also one industrial waste. In that industrial waste, a lot of toxic waste is coming out. See, friends, you are living in your home. You use water. Now, after the water is being used by you, you will see that there are certain you can say sewage disposal system, which in Hindi we say as nali. So by the side of your home, there is a nali. There is a sewage disposal system where the used water is being disposed by you, and that water flows and goes away. So a lot of this type of water is being collected and it is being disposed at many non-point sources. And the system is not so well developed right now that it becomes very difficult to identify the exact point from where the pollution is coming. And the same is true for industrial waste also. In many cases, this industrial waste is also non-point source. And especially that industrial waste, which is very toxic, the industries, especially the chemical industries, they are releasing a lot of organic pollutants also, and they are releasing a lot of inorganic pollutants. And that inorganic pollutants becomes especially toxic to the aquatic ecosystem. 
सो अलॉट ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल वेस्ट ऑल्सो कम्स अंडर नॉन पॉइंट सोर्सेज पॉल्यूशन वॉट इट कमिंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट सोर्स ऑफ पॉल्यूशन दैट इज द एनिमल सोर्स ऑफ पॉल्यूशन दैट इज द एग्रीकल्चरल सोर्स ऑफ पॉल्यूशन एंड इन एग्रीकल्चरल सोर्स ऑफ पॉल्यूशन एनिमल हजबेंड्री ऑल्सो कम इज तो बेसिक द पॉल्यूशन दैट इज कॉस्ट बाई एनिमल हजबेंड्री एनिमल हजबेंड्री दैट विल इन अ बिट ऑल्सो कम अंडर दिस एग्रीकल्चर सोर्स ऑफ पॉल्यूशन सो वट आर द वेरी फर्स्ट सोर्स ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर पॉल्यूशन बेसिकली दिस इज फर्टिलाइजर फ्रेंड सी है फर्टिलाइजर्स यू नो फ्रेंड्स Fertilizers basically contain three elements. One is nitrogen, one is phosphorus, one is potassium. NPK we say it. Now in India, if you are living in India, you will know that uh, basically urea is given a whole lot of subsidy. Nowadays, you know, uh, urea subsidy is being regulated. But previously, from many last years, 2025 years, there has been heavy subsidy on urea. Now urea is not the only fertilizer available, friends. Fertilizers mainly three types of fertilizers are famous. One is urea, obviously. Second is muriate of potash. Muriate of potassium. Third is diammonium phosphate. Now, basically, according to the soil ecology, according to the requirements of soil, we should apply the fertilizers. But the problem is that in the very in the last few decades of Indian agriculture, muriate of potassium and diammonium phosphate there was no subsidy on them, whereas urea was having getting a huge subsidy support from the government. So, because of that thing, there was excessive use of urea while agriculture. and that is what disturb the nitrogen phosphorus and potassium balance in the soil and has caused the pollution and basically this is due to the plant nutrients and when the water flows through this soil obviously those nutrients will make their way into that water so basically the unbalanced amounts of nutrients that are present in the soil they will also make their way to surface water they will also make their way to river they will also make their way to ponds they will also make their way to lakes and through the process of leaching they will also make their way to ground water so basically the surface level nutrients are causing a whole lot of water pollution got it friends one thing then if we talk about some others suppose we talk about pesticides now this pesticides is there fungicides is there insecticides is there then herbicides is there friends then next come nematicides rodenticides soil fumigants so pesticides fungicides insecticides herbicides is very common nematicides they are used to kill nematode worms rodenticides they are used to kill rodents rats similarly there are soil fumigants so basically these are being used in agriculture indiscriminately now when they are being used in agriculture they are actually inorganic nature so they don't break down Now, when these things don't break down, they add a whole lot of chemicals to the soil. Now, what are those chemicals? These chemicals are, I will go to tell you, chlorinated hydrocarbons. One thing. Then next is they contain metallic salts. They contain organophosphates. They contain carbonates. They contain thiocarbonates. They contain acetic acid derivatives, etc., etc., etc. So basically, because of the addition of these things, pesticides, fungicides, insecticides, herbicides. nematicides rodenticides soil fumigants we are going to get a whole lot of you know chlorohydrocarbons metallic salts then we are going to have organophosphates carbonates thiocarbonates acetic acid derivatives so basically you are seeing that a whole lot of chemical elements are being added to soil and ultimately these chemical elements will find their way to the water bodies and then they are going to cause water pollution so this is one more thing which is happening friends similarly this livestock this livestock are you know throwing a lot of excreta so that excreta is po causing pollution obviously the places where slaughter houses are there so in those slaughter houses these the animals are being cut so their carcasses are exposed in the water so a lot of inorganic nutrients and organic pollutants make their way to water so basically this livestock this animal husbandry sector is also causing a whole lot of aquatic pollution water pollution So the next thing we are going to talk about is thermal pollution. What is basically thermal pollution, friends? In thermal pollution, something like this is happening. Let's suppose this is a power plant. It can be a thermal power plant, it can be a nuclear power plant. This is a power plant. Now, what happens in a power plant? That in this water is being used as a coolant. Basically, these power plants are made, keeping in mind that there should be a water body nearby. So, what these power plants do? They take fresh water inside. They use this fresh water to cool down their hot elements, and after that, when this 
water this fresh water from the water reservoir is used as a coolant now when that is released into the atmosphere it is hot you can see that basically this water which is being exited with this power plant and being disposed in this lake or, or you can say in this stream basically it is increasing the temperature of the system so hot water coming out of this thermal power plant or nuclear power plant is making this temperature of this stream very hot and when the temperature of this stream is becoming hot it is basically thermal pollution because obviously the local ecology of this stream will get completely disturbed when you are going to increase the temperature the level of dissolved oxygen is going to decrease obviously the aquatic organisms living inside are going to die because here you can see the temperatures are increasing drastically if there is a difference of 1 or 2 degree it is not going to affect that much but here the temperatures are changing drastically friends got it the next thing we are going to talk about is ground water pollution you can see here friends that you know, we are producing a whole lot of waste today this waste is being disposed to a waste disposal site you can see a whole lot of waste is coming here now this waste will slowly 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 through the soil make its way to the ground water here it is going to contaminate this ground water and this ground water is continuously circulating so obviously it will go into the river it will go to other places so this contaminated ground water is going to pollute the river pollute the river and it is also going to pollute the other ground water aquifers got it friends so basically this waste disposal site we think that we have disposed that waste but that waste is making its way to the ground water it is polluting the ground water also by the process of leaching and many other processes which i am going to discuss in a separate video especially i am going to make a video you know separately for this ground water because this is a very important topic moving forward the last type of pollution that i am going to talk about is marine pollution what is basically marine pollution see marine pollution is of many types ocean is actually the ultimate garbage dump for a lot of man made pollutants also and a lot of natural pollutant also for example the rivers the rivers are bringing a lot of pollutants to the sea obviously the coastal cities the coastal cities are producing a lot of sewerage they are producing a lot of waste products they are producing a lot of garbage so all of that garbage is getting disposed in the ocean got it friends then there are many other sources of pollution friends for example a big tanker a big you can say this cargo vessel is going on when the cargo vessel a lot of oil containers are there so if this oil gets leaked in any case this oil or grease or you can say detergent it gets leased you know it, it, it get released into this water so then it is going to cause a lot of pollution in this water especially a phenomena is very much common known as oil spill this oil spill is very dangerous friends because suppose oil in this much big vessel is being disposed in this water so what will happen this oil is lighter so because this oil oil is lighter it is will start flowing at the top of the water and when it is got to start you know floating on the top of the water it will make a lot of problems for the aquatic organisms living beneath first of all it can catch fire second the you know penetration of the sunlight inside the water will be less because obviously the surface will be a little bit opaque because water is floating above the water so locally it can affect aquatic organisms very drastically so that is why oil spills are very dangerous and especially this type of marine pollution happens in offshore oil mining i hope you all know what is this offshore oil mining see friends there are two types of mining one is onshore oil mining and one is offshore oil mining what happens on onshore oil mining when you are going to get an oil field on the land so there you are going to drill a hole in the land and take out oil from it but when you are going to get these oil fields beneath the seabed so what you are going to do then you are going to drill a hole in the seabed and take out oil so basically that is offshore oil mining because the petroleum mining equipments are there inside the sea so that makes it offshore oil mining got it friends so you can see that marine pollution are because of due to a lot of reasons it is because of oil spills because of discharge of oil grease and a lot of other things even radioactive waste are also being discharged in it by nuclear facilities who are near the oceans okay also when any radioactive material is being transported by these cargo ships so there can be a lot of reasons friends so these were the basic reasons these were the basic types of sources of water pollution and i have also discussed the types of water pollution 
Now in the very next video, as I've already told you, I will be talking to you about effects of water pollution. You can get the link in the description box below. Also friends, I will be talking to you about the type of industries that cause water pollution and what are the organic pollutants involved in water pollution and what are the inorganic pollutants involved in water pollution. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If this was really helpful, kindly subscribe to my channel friends. You can share these videos to your friends. I know these videos are not very glamorous, but they are knowledgeful. So if you need knowledge, this is the place to be. Thank you for watching this video friends. Have a great day. Goodbye.